Buongiorno. Uh, well, happy to hear that people he like uh, green elephants and uh, could benefit from better memory. I have to say that we are still getting used to being called a big startup. Um, it's, uh, it's taking some time to get used to. Uh, I'll continue the cyborg theme that uh, speakers before me started, but um, I'll be talking about uh, design issues, not thought of the user interface or even a product, but more of a service and to some extent of a uh, company. But first, let me ask uh, who in the audience knows what Evernote is about? Please raise your hand. Okay, cool. Um, maybe half or two thirds. Uh, so I'll go over what Evernote is uh, very quickly and then I'll talk about some decisions that we made that may be interesting for people uh, over here who are thinking or doing their own uh, startups. So, um, okay. It's very simple, Evernote is your external brain. Uh, our mission is to give everyone uh, better memory and uh, we are very modest lot. We are building the global platform for uh, human memory. Our ambition is to have uh, hundreds of millions of users rely for Evernote for their lifetime memories. Um, the idea is simple, the service is simple. Uh, we make it easy for you to remember anything interesting that you encounter. Uh, then we whether you are in front of a computer or away from a computer using your phone or your mobile device, we make it easy to remember things. Then we sync it up into the cloud, then we sync it to your other devices, and then we make it easy for you to recall what you remembered. Um, to realize this, we have applications for all reasonable computing platforms. Uh, we have a very advanced search technologies. We have unique technology that can find text, handwritten text or printed text uh, in images. Um, again, things that you may want to remember are very diverse. It's uh, recipes, flight schedules, wine labels, uh, documents, passwords, business cards, lectures, whatever. Well, um, recently I read an interesting article in The Economist. They talk about uh, three companies, IBM, Apple, and Amazon. Uh, guess what they have in common? Uh, turns out that these companies are built not around some technology. Well, these are companies with the staying power, apparently, and uh, they're built not around some technology or some product, but around um, an idea. Uh, so is Evernote. We are modest, uh, that's our ambition. We basically, we want to be a historically significant signature uh, company dealing with uh, personal memory. Um, we are creating a new genre of service. Uh, just there are email services, blogs, social networks, photo hosting services. And then there is memory extension. So we are first and probably the biggest memory extension service, but I'm sure there will be others, but uh, I'm also sure we'll uh, lead. Um, this claim sound is probably sounds like a stretch right now. It was even more of a stretch two years ago, uh, but um, our growth was, was uh, pretty good, so it doesn't sound uh, as a complete lunacy anymore. Uh, we we uh, started the service less than three years ago. In three years, in three years, we reached uh, 10 million users. Uh, this is all um, organic. It took us 38 days to add the last 10th million of users. Uh, we had a bet in the company that uh, we'll reach this threshold before three years, and uh, we did. So everyone got uh, 64 gigabytes uh, of uh, extra memory on iPad 2, which was nice. Um, so that's what Evernote is. Uh, let's um, talk about uh, some decisions behind it. So first of all, it's um, a very unconventional idea. Uh, the way we define the, prob the problem is different from many other people. Um, we are not a not taking application. We are not about your, your personal 
productivity. We are all of that, but we are broader than that. We are memory extension. We answer universal need. Everyone with a biological brain can use a better memory. And uh, we focus on um, everything in your head, uh, not your to the to-do list or pictures or shopping list or contacts, like everything that you need to remember in context. Um, when we started, we were almost antisocial. We, we are not about your friends. We are not about your friends' pets. We are about you and about your memory. So unconventional idea required some unconventional execution decisions. For example, uh, if you claim that you are mem memory extension, you have to be available everywhere. And that caused, that made us develop applications for all sorts of different platforms and also uh, defined the, the architecture that we use for the service. We are not a cloud service, we are a hybrid service, meaning that uh, uh, your memories are in the cloud, but they are also replicated on your local device. This way you have access to your memory when you're on the plane, uh, in the mountains when you are roaming and don't want to pay uh, for internet connectivity. Platforms that we support, actually this list is uh, incomplete. We recently we added support for Docomo iMode. It's a, a, a very popular platform uh, in Japan. Um, this is, we are constantly expanding the list of supported platforms. Uh, the versions for toasters and uh, fridges are coming soon. And we do it with native apps, uh, which is becoming pretty common now, but Three or four years ago, when we were starting, it was unusual. Um, the common wisdom at that time was that um, web applications will rule the world, but we decided to go with native apps, uh, no HTML wrappers, because we needed a solid native experience um, and couldn't settle for least common denominator. The side effect of that uh, the decision was that we offload a lot of work from our servers to user devices. Like every time you use Facebook, you hit Facebook servers. Every time you use Evernote, most of the heavy lifting is done by your device. That lets us run service at the very low cost, which is important when we talk about uh, the money. We answer universal need. Uh, that means that 95% uh, of future Evernote users live outside of the US, and that um, led us to the decision to start international expansion unusually early. Um, almost Im like immediately we started effort to localize uh, Evernote into other languages and then we started educating users outside of the US about, hey, there is this memory extension service. Uh, so at this point we, uh, we, we support 36 languages on 14 platforms, so it's uh, quite a matrix as you can imagine. Uh, but that decision and that effort paid off. Uh, this is distribution of Evernote users by country. So we have a little bit over one third of our current users in the US. So that means that with like little incremental effort of uh, localization, we tripled our user base, which is nice. Uh, we are most successful so far in Japan and it's like really amazing. It, we really got traction there. As an example, there are 28 printed books about Evernote in Japanese. You walk into a Tokyo store and uh, there is a section of books about Evernote. It's crazy. Um, well, one of the problems we encountered was that it was hard to explain what Evernote is. You say memory extension, it's true, but it's somewhat abstract. For It may be okay for this crowd, but it's, it's abstract. So we struggled with it for a while, but then we basically ended up uh, to allow users, we decided that we'll allow users to define what it is. Um, we use user stories to explain whatever note is and how to use it. If you look at our blog, which is our like central communication platform, we, we have product announcements, we have partner announcements, but there are a lot of user stories, use cases. Uh, and um, actually, Product itself is our main marketing tool. We don't advertise, we like, don't have uh, like sales. Uh, all our funds go into the product and uh, it kind of works. Um, 
people try free service. We, it's a very low threshold, and uh, they experiment, and many people find out how to use it. Um, well, uh, as you may have noticed, we are an ambitious uh, company, and um, there is a bit of a, a disconnect when we say that we want hundreds of millions of users rely on Evernote, and then we say that, hey, we are about 70 people now, there were 30 people at Evernote about a year ago. Uh, the way we deal with that is by building an ecosystem. Uh, we leverage the creativity and effort of our developer partners to build functionality that is required by like, different groups of uh, people. We opened our API early on. Last summer, we launched what we call the trunk. It's a like English play word. The trunk is like trunk of the car, trunk with uh, treasures, and uh, trunk of an elephant. Uh, basically, it's a showcase of partner solutions. Uh, at this point, we have over 5,000 uh, developers doing something with our API. We have over 600 integrations live, uh, and new ones are added every week. That's how we like leverage uh, the ecosystem. Now, uh, the money question. The service is free, how can we afford it? Um, uh, server storage, bandwidth, support at all costs money. Uh, we rely on a freemium business model. The idea is that um, all of uh, Evernote applications are free. Basic service is free, and it's not crippleware, it's not trialware, like you can use it. It's, it's fully functional service, you can use it your whole life without paying as a penny, we still uh, love you. Uh, because of your life, lifetime, you'll probably recommend Evernote to a few of your friends and uh, some of them will pay. And uh, we need just a small fraction of users to buy advanced premium subscription to be uh, profitable. And uh, we make it easy for you to go back and forth between uh, free and uh, premium service. Uh, we don't like, push anyone. We don't have anyone in the, uh, in the company whose uh, title has a sales in it or who is in charge of uh, like selling Evernote. It's more important for us that you stay than, uh, than you pay. And it works. Uh, this, is a, this graph shows per percentage of users who buy premium subscription over time. Um, first month after using, after joining the service, about half percent by Evernote premium subscription. In three years, it's uh, over 20 percent, which is like pretty good. So we are on solid financial foundation to support our uh, claim. Now, we reached profitability res relatively recently, and. Um, we are still getting used to this idea that we are becoming, as we were introduced, a big startup. Uh, it may be interesting to talk about evolution of things that you worry about. Like early on, early on, we worried about money. We were raising money during the crisis of 2008, which was like great fun, the best uh, time to raise money, lots of fun. Then, uh, when we got funded, all the focus was on the product. Well, it's still important, both money and the product, but over the last couple of months, we got like new issues to worry about. Uh, cost of electricity. Uh, as we grow, biggest and biggest part of our uh, budget becomes uh, so-called variable expenses, and uh, like electric cost of electricity is one of the important ones. Um, we talked about international expansion of Evernote, so now we need to worry about supporting users in Korean and German, which is new problems. Uh, we beca became profitable, so we need to worry about taxes. And one of our latest executive meetings we spent talking about office layout. Uh, we, uh, we expanded our office space, we hired a bunch of new people, now we need to figure out how to seat people so that uh, we maximize like, teamwork and uh, just how to keep people productive in a growing company. Uh, but over it's the, all, the greatest challenge always was and always is, is uh, hiring. Uh, as those of you who had startups always know. 
Well, all that said, um, I want to emphasize that from our experience, this is the best of times to start a company or to do something that improves people's lives. Just look at the foundation that is available to us now. It's app stores that take care, that take care of your sales channel. Uh, cloud services that reduce your need for uh, capital. Open source infrastructure that like, is available for innovative services. Like social media that helps you with the marketing. Premium economics that is well understood. So that's what we call Greek meritocracy. It's like really great time to be a startup. Thank you.